Hi, everyone. I'm here with uh, Glenn Street, president of Street Characters. Glenn, how you doing? Never been better, Jeff. Perfect. Glenn, can you tell us a bit about your business and just kind of where things are at for you guys right now? Sure. Well, first of all, I'm founder and top dog of Street Characters. Um, we work with uh, businesses and colleges uh, all over the world, creating their mascots for them. Uh, for example, the last three Super Bowls, at least we've had, uh, uh, well, the, two of the three, we've had both teams in it. Last year, we just had one team in it. Um, you turn on your TV any weekend when sports is on, and you're likely to see one of our characters. Uh, we've been in business for 33 years. 85% uh, of what we do is export. We do very, two, per, two or to 5% of what we do is Alberta, and we do very little in the rest of Canada, but most of what we do is export. In fact, what I tell the politicians is all we really do is import money. It's a good thing. And uh, so how, how are you guys finding it right now with, with the COVID crisis going on? How has it impacted your business? Well, we are one of the lucky ones in that uh, we have been able to maintain operations. We send everybody at a desk home to work from home. And uh, our production team here, uh, they were spread out enough in their workstations that we had to make some really minor modifications, but not a, not a whole lot. A couple of things I did right, right early on is, uh, first thing I said to the team is, if you're not feeling well, don't come to work, I'll pay you to stay home. Because the last thing I wanted is somebody who wasn't feeling good coming in here uh, and having COVID and sharing it with the rest of the team. And that would have been really devastating for us. So in fact, we have one team member whose mother uh, is a flight attendant at WestJet. And on her last flight, she got COVID. Oh, and so uh, she and her daughter, our team member, wound up uh, uh, quarantining for 14 days. And then when mom's quarantine was done, the daughter's 14 day quarantine started. Mm -hmm. It ends next week. And I'm paying her all the way through it. Um, you know, we're, for the second part, we're using some vacation time and she had some banked hours and things like that. But she's getting full pay um, because I want the team to know that I've got their back and that they're supported. Nice. And, and around the operations, you guys are obviously keeping things clean and everything because everybody's still in operation, right? You guys are still delivering product? We're still manufacturing stuff. It's not going out as quickly as usual. Uh, and that's because uh, some of the freight systems aren't working at full capacity right now. But we've got bottles of spray bottles with bleach and water in them all over the shop. And we're getting people to constantly be wiping stuff down. And, you know, we've got uh, personal protection equipment. If two people have to get close together, they're both wearing N95 masks, for example. Uh, so we're, we've got hand, hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes, everything all over the shop. And I'm just saying we've just got to be really uh, careful this period. Right. So, Glenn, I mean, you guys, you deal with a lot of pro sports teams that are all shut down now. So are you concerned? Like, what do you, how, where do you see things in kind of 60 days from now or a year from now? How, how is it going to affect you guys? Well, we've got orders going into the summer and we're still getting, uh, we're still making sales. Uh, we're still having people uh, call us up and place orders. So we're going to be good into the summer. I suspect it might slow down a little bit then, um, but I really don't know. You know, a lot of our clients are, are colleges and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of them are, are government organizations and, and I think that their funding is going to, is going to continue. And, uh, um, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to keep the momentum going. And, and so far it's worked for us. Uh, I suppose if, uh, if things got really bad, we'd be able to pivot and we'd be able to put people onto sewing, uh, you know, face masks and things like that. Uh, it's my intent to keep the team going no matter what, um, uh, because I want to, it prove to them that they're in a great spot and that we're doing everything we can to take care of. Well, you know, and I think that's awesome. I think that, that optimism and, and positivity is great. Um, so what advice would you have for other business leaders out there? I mean, that, that might be in a different spot who might be on the verge of a, of a business shutting down or don't have any revenue. Just what advice would you have? Well, this isn't just for business owners. This is for everybody, employees and everybody. 
I know for a lot of you, you feel like this is the worst thing to ever happen. Let me assure you it's not. This is the worst thing to happen in this generation. But in 1980, when I was starting my career, the federal government came up with the program called the National Energy Program. And it was far more devastating to Calgary than COVID has been. So picture overnight, the entire industry is told to shut down. And that's essentially what happened. In fact, you could go out and buy a house for a dollar down. People were saying, just give me a dollar, you can take over my mortgage and you can have my house. And there were no buyers. It was that bad. You know, when I look at my parents and worst period of time for them was the Second World War. And I look at their parents and they went through the depression. So, you know, everybody goes through it. But, you know, if you think about it, I've given you three other examples when this has happened and everybody's come out of it fine. And when I look back to 1980 and what happened there, and I think about the people who did well, it was the people that didn't put their hands in the air and say, well, this is the way it's going to be. They say, they asked themselves, where are the opportunities now? And they sat down and they challenged themselves. And then they went out and they fought, found those opportunities. Because I promise you, there are great opportunities out, out there. And there are lots of very successful people that would tell you that this is the time where you can really do well in business. You just need to figure out where the opportunities are. So you and I have a friend that uh, in the NEP, he went out and bought a couple of buildings in downtown Calgary for very little money. And I think probably 10 years later, he was, in, he was collecting a rent more than when he paid for those buildings. And that's because he was prepared to step up and he was prepared to do things when other people were saying, this is the end of the world. I think Warren Buffett probably said it best, you know, be fearful when people are greedy and greedy when people are fearful. And right now, if you're willing to push through your fear and really sit down and challenge yourself and figure out where the opportunities are, I promise you they're there. You know what, I agree with you. And I, it, it won't be easy and there will be a lot of people that are hurt, but um, you're right. You, you can't give up. I mean, it, life will go on. So I, I love that. That's, that's some great advice. Well, well, that's a great, and that's a great thing. Like not everybody's going to survive this. You know, I look at the restaurant industry, which is probably the toughest area. Uh, but you know, um, there's a restaurant close to where I live at home and, and he's putting out a menu every week where you can buy lasagna and shepherd's pie and a couple of other dishes and uh, they're pre-packaged and you go home you, you know you take them and you bake them at home so and and you pick it up either on a tuesday or thursday those are the only two days he's open yep. which i think is genius and so if you've got a pizza shop i mean can you prepare your pizzas shrink wrap them freeze them and then sell them to people and say hey take it home keep it in your freezer when, freezer when you're hungry take it out and fresh bake it then. And I look at his model and I'm thinking the next step is, rather than relying on people coming to him and saying, oh yeah, I've got to remember to order this week, put people on a subscription, say, hey, for 30 bucks a week, I'm gonna give you so many meals a week and then just come by Tuesday or Thursday and come and pick it up. Then you know you've got the revenue coming in and it's up to the customer to remember to come by and pick up the food. And uh, you know, every industry there's opportunities like that talking to a guy yesterday who's kind of uh, who has a tailor business and sells custom clothing and i said to him i've never understood why his industry every guy hates shopping well maybe except for nick thompson who's a good buddy of ours <laughs> but other than nick everybody hates every guy hates shopping for clothing and i hate going down and going into a thing why don't you take my measurements i'll pay you 300 bucks a month and Every three months, I get a, a blazer, a suit, sport coat, and I get a couple of shirts. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, I've got the money coming, and you don't have to wait for me to pick up the phone. Yeah. You're sending me emails and saying, hey, what do you want this, this quarter? Uh, what do you think? And here's some ideas I've got for you. The opportunities are out there, I promise you. You just, you can't sit back and feel sorry for yourself and wait for them to come back for you. I agree more. Glenn, what are you doing yourself to, to deal with the downturn? I mean, with, with the, you know, staying at home and the social distancing, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Well, I was, uh, 
I, for years, have worked out three times a week uh, doing boot camp. Uh, you know, so that was probably the toughest thing for me to give up is not going to boot camp. So I've got a treadmill in my basement. I'm running 5K three times a week. I really believe that, uh, that exercise is more important now than ever. Um, you know, we're under stress. It's a new stress. Um, you know, the worst stress you feel is the stress that you don't feel you have control of. And that's what I love about running a, my own business. Yes, it's, there's more stress to it, but it's stress I get to control. But the stress right now is stress that's outside of a lot of our control. So number one thing is I, I'm making sure, more than ever, I'm making sure that I'm exercising, getting my heart rate up. That's also important for me because I'm in the high risk category. Um, I have asthma and I've got to keep my lungs healthy and exercise helps keep my lungs clear. Uh, I'm doing that. Um, Peggy and I don't have children, so that makes it a little bit easier. We, you know, she's got parents in High River who are elderly. We can't go see them. We're, we're talking to them. But we're trying to keep things as normal as possible. And, um, you know, it's all attitude. We've decided it is what it is. We're not trying to fight it. We're not lamenting it. We're just accepting it and living our lives uh, as best we can. Well, you know what? I couldn't agree more. Um, appreciate you taking the time, Glenn, and uh, good luck with everything and uh, stay healthy and uh, we'll definitely uh, stay in touch here. Yeah, and one more point, Jeff. You know, I made comments about restaurants and things like that. If you're an employee for a restaurant, those are things that you can do too. You can go to your boss who's scared right now, not sure how to, how to make things work and say, hey, I've got this idea. Or if you come up with an idea, other idea, I'm willing to donate my time right now to get this up and going. You're not doing anything anyway. And let's see if we can save this and if we can turn this around and we can make it better. So, you know, there's, there's ideas out there. And if you want to make it work, you'll figure out how to do it. And that's really my message is now you see who the real strong ones are who can, you know, don't sit around and feel sorry for themselves. Just get up there and get after it and figure out what the new normal is. You know, Glenn, because that, that is a great point because the fact when we say we're all in it together, it's not just the business owners and we can't just rely on the government to bail us out of this. This is everybody. This is the business owners, the employees, the government, everybody needs to come together. So I, I love that as well. Okay, Glenn, thank you, sir. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. Thank you.